Have you ever wondered about principles that can make you wealthy? It's interesting how wealth moves from era to era and from the economic era of the agricultural age into the economic era of the industrial age and, and then into the information age and the distribution age, et cetera, et cetera. And the interesting thing is this, even though principles or the economic eras of the world change, there are some sound, solid, eternal principles that have, have always and will always create wealth. And that is what we are here to talk to you about today with my next guest, Rick Williams, the Wealth Coach. Rick, glad to have you on the, on the channel, brother. Top of the afternoon to you, man. Appreciate you, brother. How are you, my illustrious friend? Fantastic, fantastic. So, so you teach people about wealth creation, but you do it from the perspective of biblical principles, which are ancient, um, which are eternal, which are historic, but yet they're up to date. So what would you say to our YouTube viewers who are out there like literally seeking to figure out like how can I change my life financially? I think, I know for me when I was, before I figured out wealth principles, um, I was happy when I was broke. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't happy that I was broke. Amen. Right? <laughs> and Amen. So, so I wanted to find some principles that I could apply that would take my life and my family's life to the next level. So what do you say to the person who's thinking like, I've got to change my life because what's happening now cannot last forever? What do you say to that person? Well, first thing I would do is I would say I would be like Matthew, the 20th chapter, mm -hmm. where uh, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out to hire some servants. Okay. He said, so he got up in the morning, he found some people need a job. Went out in the afternoon, found some people needed a job. Went out in the, in the early evening and found some more people to hire. And then finally towards, the, towards midnight, he found some more people and say, hey, what's going on with you all? And they say, we ain't, we ain't got no work. He say, you're hired too. So I would treat principles like he did. I would hire principles. Mm, what does that mean, hire principles? Well, principles, principles they don't ever get tired. Mm. They don't ever get sleepy. They don't call in and tell you they're not coming. Mm -hmm. They don't get worn out. They, they work 24 hours a day. Mm. And the, the way that you make money is that you have to have something that's working for you while you're asleep. And principles work for you on a regular basis. And what? Principles are infallible. They mm. never, ever, they never give in. They never, they never do not perform what they um, are meant to perform. And mm -hmm. so I wouldn't put my money and my life and my legacy in the hands of anything that didn't what? Have um, some infallibility. So mm. principles are infallible. So when you employ them, it's just like employing, you know, um, it's just like having guaranteed success because the principle guarantees the success. That's why my new book is called Unmovable, Unstoppable, Unshakable Principles, Bible principles that guarantee your financial success mm. because you cannot carry out a principle and not get the result of it. It's impossible. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting as I think about principles because when people say principles, like, what does that even mean? What well, means the laws that govern the universe, like gravity is a principle, right? Mm -hmm. And so what goes up must come down. If I, if I take my glasses and I drop them 10 times, they're not gonna fall nine times and just hang out in the air mm -hmm. the 10th time, right? Mm -hmm. um, all principles always work the same for everybody. In fact, I like to think of principles as God's automation. But what I think I hear you saying mm -hmm. is God has created some principles that are laid out in the Bible that can teach people specific things they can do to create wealth. Is that, am I close? Absolutely. That's well, what, or is that what I'm saying? Well, like what we just got to talk about. One principle in the Bible about making money is leverage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so this is Jesus talking when he's mm -hmm. making this example in the 20th chapter of Matthew. So he's saying that a, a householder, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is something, is like this or like that, he's saying the kingdom that I brought to this earth is like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way that you can live and be successful on this earth is like this. Okay, the way that you can have the, the way that you can be all you were meant to be is like this. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into illustrations about how to be the best you can possibly be based on what principles you ought to be um, performing. So he says, listen, he said, it's like a man who went out and started hiring people, you know. And he says, so one principle about money making is that you have to do what? You have to leverage and leverage what? Because if you have 10 people that's doing the same thing every day and you all are working together versus you doing one thing by yourself, well, and everybody's working an hour. It's 10 hours worth of work, even though you only did one hour worth of the work. And that's mm -hmm. a major principle that some people can't wrap their minds around. Leverage time, yeah. other people's time, mm -hmm. Hmm, by yep. paying them. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so it makes a whole lot more sense to, 
this is the big difference between an employee's mindset and mm-hmm. an employer's mindset. The biggest difference is, is that you can give an employee $100,000 and he would say, what, let me, go put it, let me go put it up so I can be safe and then let me go back to work. He says, so now I got $100,000 worth of cushion and I go back to work and chances of me ever being broke or poor again is uh, little to none because I'm going to keep working hard and I'm going to make sure I keep saving that money. Mm. Whereas in a person that applies the Bible's principles says, listen, I'm going to make sure that this money works harder than I work. And I'm going to make sure that I get people involved so they can do what? Help my money work for me as opposed to me working for the money. And it's a, it's a principle that, that is infallible because uh, 10 people can do things way faster than uh, one person can. Mm. So you're talking about leveraging other people's time through delegation. So they're willing to do some work for you because you're willing to pay them. And you're willing to pay them because it buys you back the time that you would have spent doing the work. But... What if somebody's just getting started and they don't have money to pay somebody? Then what do they do? Okay, so you create the money. Because all money what is... What does that mean, create the money? Yeah, all money is created in the brain. Okay, mm-hmm. money is not... Money is created in the brain. You can create as much money as you want to. All you have to do is be a valuable person. You know? Well, let's take, for example, uh, in the, the movie The Pursuit of Happiness. I really like that movie. Okay. Because the young man didn't have... Uh, Chris Gardner didn't have any money. Right. You know, so... He took an internship mm-hmm. and, and, um, and was very frugal with a few dollars that he had, and he was willing to go through what he needed to go through to be able to get connected to people who did have some money. Mm-hmm. You know? And so he took his skill sets to people who did have some money, mm. and, um, and he leveraged his skill sets, all right? because leverage is the point that I'm making. Leverage comes in all kinds of categories, but everybody that's wealthy understands leverage and they employ that principle. 100%. So he went to, so he went there and he started working and he was like, man, um, I'm, I'm not getting paid any money, any physical money, I'm not getting paid. But I'm around all these people who, um, first of all, I'm learning money language, you know, mm. because I'm around people who uh, make money on a regular basis. And I'm talking to people on the phone every day who have millions of dollars, even though I don't have a dollar in my pocket. Mm. So I'm getting acclimated with what, how to have a conversation with somebody who has some money. And eventually, because all the money that we want that's not in our pocket is in the pocket of somebody who God had already ordained to give it to us. Mm. You know? But he's only, gonna, he's only ordained to give it to us not because of you just entitled and got something coming, but because you have a skill set that they need. You know? And uh, so he, he called and called and called until he found somebody who was at the top of his list. He kind of skipped and got up to somebody who was at the top of his list, and he had a conversation with the man. The man told him, listen, I didn't know you was new over there, Chris, you know, and uh, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you our millions of dollars. He said, but you can talk to all my friends. And what happened? He ended up talking to all of his friends and ended up developing relationships with all these people while doing an internship. And that's Mm. why, so if you can leverage and develop a skill, you don't need money to make money. You need a skill to make money. Mm. And in order for you to gain that skill, you have to get around people who, uh, you can, uh, who, if more people would do internships today, Mm -hmm. more people would be rich. Mm. Who, who are starting out and they don't have a lot, but you have to humble yourself up under the mighty hand of God so he can exalt you in due time. So if you don't have anything initially in your pocket, that doesn't matter because you can get in your head with a transfer to your pocket if you do something for the person that makes them willing to exchange that money for the skill set that you bring to the table. Mm. Mm. It's interesting because as I think about leverage, leverage is something, it's, 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 a, it's a tool or it could be delegation, it could be automation, it could be a mechanical mechanism that you use to create a multiplied output from a minimal input. Mm -hmm. And one of the principles that I like to share with people is you can always make up and leverage what you lack in ability. And a lot of times, people think because they don't have the ability that that means that they have no access. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily your ability to do the thing. Sometimes it's just your ability to find and then figure out how to use the right leverage. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Mm. You know, knock and the door shall be open. Mm. And then the Bible says we have not because we ask not. So if any man lack wisdom, the scriptures say, let him ask for God, who giveth all men liberally and upbraid him not. Mm-hmm. So going back to um, Chris Gardner and his attitude. You so, and you say this quite often, and I really, I really appreciate, I appreciate it more every day when I hear this. Mm. When your attitude is right, the facts don't even matter. They don't matter Mm-mm. at all. <laughs> it's not that they don't matter that much. They just don't matter at all. No, they don't know? matter at all because mm-hmm. they become irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Because you can't, and the Bible says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he's going to rise again. Mm-hmm. So you cannot keep a good person down. 
Mm. It's impossible. It's impossible when the person's attitude is right because the attitude opens up the ability to learn. Mm. And most people, the problem with that, it's not a money problem that people have. It's really that they don't have assets because income follows assets, as you well know, because um, as you so eloquently put it, so eloquently put it. So we do three things basically for people. Number Mm -hmm. one, we help people make more money. Mm -hmm. And number two, we help people to be able to manage the money better. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we help people to be able to multiply the money that they manage. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the first thing that we do. First thing that we do is we help people to make more money because we help them change. Well, you're the one that created this amazing formula. In fact, it's the title of my new book. Mm-hmm. And the title of my new book is called The Wealth Formula. Okay. And it's MS, <clears throat> excuse me, MS plus SS plus TS equals assets. Mm. So MS is the mindset part. So um, the problem or the challenge that we have as a person is that we don't have money problems. We just have um, asset problems because the asset is what creates the money. But mm-hmm. you can't get to the asset you don't have the right mindset. If you don't have the right mindset. Because mm-hmm. you got to have the right mindset before you can have, before you can develop a skill, skill set. Mm-hmm. Because if your attitude is not right, you can't develop a skill. Mm-hmm. In other words, why would I do something if I didn't think it was going to be worth the time I put into it? Mm-hmm. And if I sit around thinking all day long, you know, about, hey, you know what? Um, if I put the time into this, it's not going to be worth it. So what do I do? I don't do anything. Mm-hmm. And so now what? I don't have any skills. So if I don't have any skills, that means I don't have any... Uh, I don't have any tools to work with the skills, which means I ain't got no assets, which mm. is why people don't have money. So, wow. so we have to start at the beginning, at least, with, um, with the skill set, I mean, with the mindset. So that's, what, that's the first thing that we work on when we start talking to people and they come into our, we have a group called the Posterity Practices. Mm-hmm. And the reason that we call it that is because we're always looking to make money past us. It's not about us. It's about it's our about kids. You know, it's about our kids grandkids. and our grandkids. That makes sense? So, 1,000%. Mm-hmm. 1,000%. So, okay, you talk about mindset when you... I get that part, because if your attitude's right, the facts don't matter. And if your attitude's wrong, the facts don't matter, because you don't see things the way they are. You see things the way you are, right? Okay. Then you said skill set. Talk to me. Okay. What kind of skill set are you talking about? Right. So we, we teach people, look, for example, we teach people skill sets on how to tell stories, mm-hmm. you know, because I've been a storyteller since I was a little boy. Okay. So uh, well, I remember I wrote my first story when I was around nine years old. Uh, and the teacher didn't think it was me. She told me it was somebody else who wrote it. She said, you're lying, Ricky. Um, this is not, she gave us some spelling words. And she said, um, everybody take this, these spelling words and put them into a story. So I was done in about 10 minutes. And uh, everybody was, you know, because that's my, you know, everybody got a gift. You know? Right, so, so that was your gift. That was my gift, right. So, so the lady, um, she just didn't believe it. Or she, I don't know, she was astounded. So she came up, she brought me to the front of the class. And she said, who wrote this? I said, um, who wrote what? What do you mean? She said, who wrote this story, this because you got these spelling words, ain't no way in the world you finish in 10 minutes. You see everybody else scratching their head. I said, well, I said, she said, I know what you did. She said, you took this story and you, you knew the spelling words because you always be doing your work in advance, you know. So you knew he was going to have these spelling words. And you went home and you did. You told your mom and I'm to write the story. And then you brought it back to school. Now you're trying to pass it off like it's your story. I just want to make everybody think you're so doggone smart. Nine years old. You're talking about conspiracy theory. <laughs> I was like, sweet hour of prayer. I was like, uh, I was like, what are you talking about? I mm. said, I just wrote, you just gave us the words a few minutes ago. So she, she just wouldn't believe it, but I've always had a knack for stories. So what we do is we teach people how to tell stories. That's one, thing, that's one skill set that we teach people. And um, it helps make them a lot of money because they didn't understand. They're trying to talk to people, Myron, and you know this probably better than maybe 99% of the whole population. But people try to talk to people as though a person is really listening to their psychological or their like like the technical parts of what they're talking about. Mm. And the person got all kind of stuff on their mind that's Mm. that's blocking whatever you're talking about. So it just sounds like yada, yada, yada. Mm. And people can remember narrative. People don't. One hundred percent. Yeah. So stories make us make a lot of sense. So we teach people how to take a person, put them in the jungle, get them out the jungle and then tell them more of the story. So we teach people that on a regular basis in our classes. For example, when I was around um, seven, eight years old, um, I was in a parking lot in a school. I was in a school parking lot, and uh, and it was this guy named Lee. Mm-hmm. And Lee is about Lee is he was only one grade bigger than me, man. One one grade uh, higher, than, higher than me, but he's about sixteen. He had failed about six times. Wow. Right? So he was a big wow. dude. He looked like if anybody, if you ever got a picture of Goliath in your mind. <laughs> It was Lee, all right, Lee, Lee Goliath. You uh, so Lee Goliath is uh, out here, and we're in the middle of the, of the playground, and he over here jumping on a little dude. Well, 
I come from a family, we get kind of incensed when somebody try to punk somebody else. We just, just part of our makeup. We, we like to jump in fights and try to help, you know. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like him. I just did not like him. But he's light years bigger. So I don't know what happened, man. Some just overcame my body. And I said, hey, man, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? So he said, yeah. I said, why your voice so deep, man? <laughs> he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said uh, I thought you never asked. So I'm like, Darth Vader, dude. So he comes on over and he grabs me, right? So he slings me on the ground. So he got me on the ground, and I'm like, I'm waiting on these superpowers, something to come up, you know, to bag up what I just got through saying, you know? I'm selling these wolf tickets and he buying them, right? So I'm on the ground, and so now he got me on the ground, and he's slapping my head around like a hockey puck. Bing, bing, <laughs> bing, bing, <laughs> And he got his knees on my chest. And I'm like, <sighs> okay. Finally, somebody called my brother. I said, hey, man, hey, hey, plumber. Somebody got your brother on the ground, man. They called my brother plumber. I don't know. He had a nickname every neighborhood we moved in. <laughs> we moved a lot when we was young. Okay, yeah, you that's too. We moved a lot. Yeah, you know. That's too. I get but, it. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how he got this plumber. But anyway, whatever he was, I was little then. So they say, hey, man, they got a little plumber on the ground, and somebody giving him the business over there. You better get over there and help your little brother, man. So he comes over. Now, him and Lee the same size. But he's five years older than me. All right? Yeah, so right. I'm like, so he's like, Ricky, Ricky. I'm like, yeah. He said, roll over, man. Roll over. I said, roll over. Roll over. I can't even breathe, man. He said, man, roll over, man. I said, I can't, I can't breathe. So finally, he mercilessly snatched Lee up off of me and, um, and tossed him to the side. He don't want to fight my brother because they're the same size. So I get up. I say, hey, man, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you jump that dude, man? He said, well, brother, let me ask you a question. I'm like, what? He said, who started the fight? I'm like, I did. I said, what that got to do with anything? I said, it's your brother on the ground. Man, it's time to come over here. I thought for sure he was going to whoop him together. He's a thug, man. He always jumping on people. He said, did you start the fight? I said, yeah, I started, I started the fight. But why are you getting all philosophical right now? He said, he, said, he said, man, he said, listen, Ricky. He said, if you start something, you better be willing to finish it, man. I ain't going to always be around. Mm -hmm. And then he told us, what did my grandma and everybody say? He said, don't let your mouth write a check. That your behind can't that your behind can't cash, and I said, oh man, dude, I can't believe this Marcus yeah. Garvey philosophizing, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I got Lee over here on my chest with his knees. Leave the crap out of me, but he did teach me that I was going to have to uh, stand up on my own sometimes. But my point is that we teach people that. So, who is the person that was in the jungle? Because hmm. we take the person, we put them in the jungle. Who is the person? You, me, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then what was the jungle? Lee. Lee. <laughs> and then how did I get out? Your brother. Right. So if you can tell a story that simply, then you can, you can uh, make millions of dollars, you know. And then that's mm -hmm. how we've had million dollar days because we teach people how to tell stories and how to really get into the, into, so a person can remember what you was talking about because, you know, how people are. They don't they remember, remember what you said. They can remember it. They can resonate with it. They can relate to it. It just makes, it's like, oh, okay, this guy's like me. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Because we are. Exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. And what are the tool set? You talk about a tool set. What kind of tool set are we talking about? Okay. So you know, about a toolbox with some hammer and a nail and a level and <laughs> screwdrivers. What you talking about? Well, you know, now we're in this era now where um, we have all this technology. And Ooh, people, don't we, though? And people just don't know how to use it, you know? And they don't realize that they can get some amazing assist. You know, technology ain't nothing but like a good point guard. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when I used to hoop my and I used to mm -hmm. give them a business. <laughs> I was giving it because I because I love to see somebody else score. Mm -hmm. I really do. I feel like you feel that way about life too. One thousand. You pass us so many tools that really help us to be able to do things at a higher level, and I believe you get an amazing amount of joy of seeing somebody else score. Do you feel that way? Oh, one hundred percent. So, so that's what I get joy out of. I get joy out of seeing the next person be able to score and see their situation be different. That's why I jumped in that fight with Lee. You know, because I was like, I want to see this dude go home. The little dude he's beating up, you know, mm -hmm. and make it home unscathed. And, um, and I don't like seeing people intimidated. But what people don't understand is that if you use these tools, it'll help you to be able to do things at a much more rapid level and way more efficiently. You mm. know? For example, we show people how to use chat GPT. Most people don't use it. We show people how to do that. We show people how to create their own avatars where they can be talking. You know, I got a Rick the Wealth Coach avatar. Mm. Y'all don't know if he's talking right now. <laughs> 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 So we talked about we talked about making money and we talked about mindset, skill set, and tool set. Um, when you say help people manage money, what's that look like? What does that mean? Okay. Well, first of all, we got to get to 
the actual assets. Oh, assets. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, let's get to assets. Okay, all right. Because that equals assets. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and that's your ingenious formula, too. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, genius, Myra. And, um, and so the assets is what actually makes money. Okay. People think that people think that they got a money problem. I'm like, no, you have an asset problem because you don't have something that's creating some money today that you did yesterday. Mm, so, so good. They just don't understand it. I've been I've been I've been live every week for almost six years. So mm. if you go on my YouTube channel, I've got thousands of videos. Wow. Wow. Because first of all, because I love people, you know, and I just really love to see somebody get some help. All right, mm. that's the, that's the number one thing. But secondly, from a business perspective, those are assets. Meaning mm -hmm. that what? People can find out who you are and what you stand for, and they can, and they can watch it over and over again. You know, those assets. And assets, are that's what leads to income because people want to make money. I'm like, you know, you don't understand what you cash in is you cash in a trust check. Mm. Okay? In other words, people only do business with you because they trust you. Mm. All right? And why should, why should they trust you if they ain't seen you but six minutes? Mm. You know, they say, I got some. That's interesting because um, I was watching a Daniel Priestley video mm -hmm. and he talked about this guy named Robin Dunbar mm -hmm. who has these Dunbar numbers. Mm -hmm. And Dunbar's numbers are 7 Eleven and then they buy. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. He said that people need, in order for somebody to feel comfortable buying from you, mm -hmm. they need to have seven interactions with you. No, so they need to spend seven hours with you mm -hmm. and have 11 interactions. Mm -hmm. And then they feel comfortable buying. And so. Clearly, like we don't have enough hours in our day to spend seven hours with enough people to pay us the amount of money that would make us wealthy. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Well, we do that through the leverage of automation mm -hmm. by having YouTube videos out there, Instagram posts out there, TikTok videos out there, podcast interviews out there, books out there. Mm -hmm. where people can go and they can do an immersion mm -hmm. in our, into our idea pool mm -hmm. and spend seven hours swimming around in there and they come back time after time after time, 11 interactions. And if you give them value every time they show up, they tend to believe that, hey, this is a person of value, mm -hmm. so this is a person I can value. Absolutely. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And that's why, that's why your assets should reflect who you are. Mm. You know? Because your assets have to be radioactive. They have to draw the people who, who appreciate who you are, and it needs to repel the people who don't. Who don't. Mm. So you can have a life, you know, because life is not about and, a, and about the amount of possessions that a man has. Life is about the amount of impact that you can have mm. and, and about how much peace you can have too. You know, wow. so, so if you have assets that reflect who you really are, that's why your assets are really, they're just a result of your signal. Mm. See, an asset is a signal. It sends out a message. And your signal, it has all kind of reactions that comes with it. And, mm. um, and typically, typically signals, I believe one reason that people don't like to put out assets <laughs> is because they're concerned about the negative response potentially, to the asset that they put out. Mm. So they would rather, they, uh, I believe that people like to avoid negativity so much until they just don't put out assets. For example, mm. Joseph. Because they're afraid of what they think other people might think if they do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's, a str that's, a strong, that's a stronghold with people mm. and why you have a lot of people who are, who are really superstars <clears throat> who ain't never been in the game. Mm. Yeah, they're superstars. That was bar. Yeah, they're in a the bench though. I'm like the bat. If this guy was up, if he ever got in the game, he bat three thousand. Mm. But he don't, he don't ever get off the bench. You wow. know why? Because he's too concerned about the way he looks in front of a pitcher. Wow. But he ought to just get on up and start batting. Take Joseph for example. Joseph said, "Man, he he put a, he went ahead on and put some assets out there." He said, "I had a dream, y'all." <laughs> talking to his brothers. I had a dream. This right. afternoon. He said, "I got a dream," and he said, "All uh, mm -hmm. oh, y'all gonna bow down to me? You too, daddy. You too, mama." Mm. He said. So he put that asset out there. Mm. Now, that was a signal because your asset is your signal. Right. You know, it's who you are and, um, and what you're about, mm -hmm. you know, and how you can help people. Mm -hmm. And some people receive it good, others don't. Well. All right. So, so his brothers didn't receive that quite so well. Yeah, they weren't feeling it. Yeah, they weren't feeling that at all. They was like, man, you little snotty nose, little brat, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to hijack you out there, look, that, that little uh, trench coat. Of many that, colors. that coat of many colors. You got your little trench coat. <clears throat> we're going to hijack you out your little coat. And uh, we got something else better for you. Think about killing you, but we ain't going to go that far. So we just sling you on over in a, in, a, in a pit someplace and lock you up in a local, um, in a local Canaanite jail and, mm. um, and uh, see if we can get some money for you. So, mm. But what happened was that his, as his signal, and this is why I believe people don't put out assets. I think this is a, a serious reason why people are not living their best life mm. because they're so concerned about who's going to not receive that signal. Mm. But the signal has to be received and not received for it to be a real signal. Wow. 
Wow. It's got to be received so, and not received. So who it repels is as important, if not more important, than who it attracts. Oh, absolutely. Because what happens is that the distraction that takes place, because you talk, you talk about this all the time, Aaron. Every mm -hmm. time you have an intention, there's a distraction. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, but, you can't have, but it's an intention, meaning that I'm intended on doing this. And because I'm so laser being focused on what my intentions are, the distractions, they really don't even really matter because mm -hmm. they don't really even exist. In other words, when I see people and they're like, I'm like, what's wrong with you, brother? What's wrong with your sister? They're like, man, I tried to do something and just all of this backlash. I'm like, well, why are those people in your head? And they say, well, what do you mean why are they in my head? And I say, why don't you just raise the rent? Mm. And they say, what do you mean by that, Ricky? I say, the rent in your head. Your head is a tabernacle. Your body is a, is a, is a house of God. And people worried about the rent they collect off of physical houses. I'm like, you should be concerned about the rent you charge in your brain. Mm. Make sense? 100. Wow. So, so don't even let them off, in, off up in there. Yeah, which raise the rent, they'll leave. They'll leave. They'll just go right, away. Because yeah. people, people, hoarders don't like to pay rent. No, hoarders don't want to pay rent. No, no, yeah. no they don't want to pay Squatters rent. don't want Squatters to pay don't, rent. No, they don't want to pay yeah. rent. So why would you have a hoarder and a squatter in your brain? And, and then... Um, Take up space and ain't paying nothing. Ain't paying nothing. And then, and then you end up getting validated by a person that's what? Invalid. Mm. So if you, get, if you get validation from an invalid person, what does invalid mean? An invalid. Mm. Was an invalid, somebody that ain't capable of doing nothing. Wow. The guy who was sitting by the pool for 38 years, years. He, was in, he was an invalid. And he was what? Invalid. Valid. Wow. Right. So when people would go by, why was they running by him? Because he was invalid. Wow. Okay? And because he was an invalid. So why would we run around trying to get our validations from invalids? Whew, Make sense? Bro. Can you stop swinging for a hot second? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. So that's the asset part. So that's the asset part. And I believe part. that's why people don't create assets because I believe that's why people are walking they, around they asset less. Mm, because they don't write the book because they think it won't sell. They don't carry the message because they think it won't be received. They don't build the house because they think it won't rent. It just doesn't matter. Whatever the asset is, they just refuse to do it because they tell themselves a story on the front end mm -hmm. that makes it impossible for them to work on it on the back end. Absolutely. Paralyzing. Mm. A paralyzing, a, mm. a paralyzing story. A to the man. Wow. And your next question was, um, manage money. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about managing money. Like, what is, mm -hmm. what, like, what's the, what are the benefits of that? Mm -hmm. What does it mean mm -hmm. to manage money? What does it mean not to manage money? What does that manage money? Is that talking about? You talking about a budget? What are you talking about? Well, I believe people put too much emphasis on, uh, on things. They, I believe that people spend more money on things than they spend on their mind. Mm. And I believe that that's a terrible travesty. And because they don't understand that if they can get their mind right, they can have, some, they can have so much more money. Mm. So they're not managing their money right because what they do with their money doesn't include their mind. You know? They, they, it's like, you know, it's like I have a 2009 um, Buick Enclave that I drive. Mm -hmm. But I've taken train and it's cost almost a million dollars. Wow. Okay. Because that don't mean nothing to me, you know, because I, I, I have more confidence in my brain than I have. In, and that's a nice and car. And you do in your car. Yeah, it's a nice car. It drives nice and all that sort of a thing. You know, I ain't tripping, you know. And I'm not saying it's okay for somebody. You should buy whatever car you like if that's what you right. want to do. But, it's, but if you had a choice between, I remember when I was first taking one of your challenges, when I first, when you first started doing them, mm -hmm. about the fourth or fifth challenge you was doing. And I was sitting in, um, I was just sitting there listening, taking notes. And um, somebody came on and he was talking about the price of what it cost um, to join, to start what she was doing, one of your programs, 20 some thousand dollars or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was like, well, if I was you, if I had a car, I'd just go trade it in. Mm. And um, somebody walked by me while he was talking. He said, what did that guy just say? He said, uh, I said, he just said if somebody had a car that they could actually trade in for $27,000, that would be better money management than the way they're managing their money. And uh, she's, oh, what the heck? That sounds crazy. Who in their right mind? We're trading their car for twenty seven thousand and give it to him. I say, No, you're not understanding. They're not giving the money to him. It ain't like he, he ain't no pimp. Okay. <laughs> they're giving they're taking the money and they're and they're spending that money on their brain so that they can develop the assets to have some real money. That's a better management of their money mm -hmm. than if they went and just keep driving a car around it's depreciating in value. Catch the bus, Gus, all right? And uh, and uh, and learn how to get paid. You know, with two pupae, with two peas, all right? And uh, so because I believe in managing money that way, then that's how I went from being um, just hanging out with you. That's how I went from making $100,000 a year to making $100,000 in a month, you know, to making 100000 to making a million dollars in a day. Mm. That's how you manage money. Mm. And the way you manage money is that you manage your brain. Mm. Okay, you get your brain right, 
and then um, and then your money. You have to follow your brain waves. All mm. right. And so you can have some brain waves that your money follow, or you can just wave at your money while I, while I roll away. Mm. You, you take, pick the wave. All right. Like buy, hello money or bye yeah, bye. Yeah, you want to wave like this or you want to wave like that? How you want to mm. wave? See, when you get that mind right, then you wave like that. So good. Because the money comes at you. So that's part of the money management. Part of what we do too is that we show you, like my wife Shantae is an amazing budgeter. Mm. So part of what we do is we show you how to break down and be able to um, put money, um, uh, to be able to live off of less than what you make. Because she's got a she got a lunch money from third grade. Mm. I'm, telling you right now. I'm like, what's your credit score again, girl? She's like, I think eighteen thousand. I'm like, I thought it only go up to eight fifty. <laughs> she hey, listen, she squeezed Benjamin until he need surgery. You hear me? What's your name again? Ben. I'm like, what? Say your name again, bro. You ain't got no bass in your voice. Uh, uh-uh, uh not around here. Because uh, she just squeezed the mess out of them. So we have a, a, we a tag team because I know how to help you to create a whole lot of money. Mm. And she knows how to show you how to get a discount on everything. We're just down here eating. Every restaurant we go in, every single restaurant we go in, she like, uh, uh, she uh, they get through and she said, can I get that, can I get that um, coupon from you right now? And they're like, yeah. Um, um, and if you use it right now, you get 25% off right now. I'm just sitting there like, we, do we really have time for this? <laughs> like this woman act like she ain't got a dollar. I'm mm-hmm. amazed, but it's a good relationship. Oh, 100%. Be- because you need somebody in your companies. You need somebody in your businesses who are conscious of what's being spent. Every dime and every dollar. Yes, sir. So yes, we sir. teach people how to do the same thing. Because she pays all my bills. I don't pay no bills. Mm-hmm. So we teach everybody how to do the same thing. We teach them how to have people in your camp. As you run a business, as you run a company, we teach them the four people that you need to have in your company. Mm. And I believe our good friend Daniel Priestley, who's going to be in town in, uh, May. in May, I believe he talks about this in his book. But he says there's four people that you need to have to be able to run a viable lifestyle business. Okay. And one of them is you need to have somebody that's in charge of your finances. Mm. You don't pay the bills, you let them pay them. You make sure that you know what they're doing, but right. you make sure that you don't waste your bandwidth on that unless right. that's your skill set. Right. Now, if that's your skill set, then cool. But if it's then not, you then let somebody else do it. And that's not my skill set. That's her skill set. Right. All right. So then the second thing you need is somebody that's over your operations. Mm. So that somebody will be able, this is money management. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you can't manage money unless you got people who are in place doing the things that they're supposed to do. Mm. All right. Because what happens is that you get so worn out from the processes of doing other people's jobs until your money shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and then ultimately disappears mm. because of the fact that you don't have the, p- the proper people in place. And that's the, that's the mentality of a wealthy person. A wealthy person never wants to do what somebody else is supposed to be doing. Mm. That's part of how you manage money. Peter Drucker put it this way. You know, Peter Drucker, the, the, mm-hmm. the CEO for Merrill Lynch. And Peter Drucker put it this way. He says, nothing more useless and nothing more worthless than seeing somebody do something real good that they shouldn't be doing no way. Mm. Wow. That, that, hit, that, that was strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why, give you, so why volunteer for high blood pressure? Mm. My blood pressure is 110 over 87. Mm. All right. I'm sure yours is comparable. All right. Why? Because we believe in letting people do what they're supposed to. That's how you manage money. Yeah. You manage. So we teach people the ideas of how to manage money. You need somebody that's in charge of operations. You need somebody that's in charge of your finances. You need somebody that's in charge of your sales and marketing. You know. So when I, when I wake up every morning, there are already commercials running. Mm-hmm. And we teach people how to have the commercials running for them. Mm-hmm. You know, when I wake up every morning, the ads are already out. So we teach people how to have their ads going out. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I wake up every morning, the, the email sequences are already going on. So we teach people. That's how you manage money. Mm-hmm. You manage money because you let people do the part that they're supposed to do. And then when you look, because I don't care. I don't care how, you, how, how much you try to manage $100. It's still 100 bucks. You say, we well, you know it, Ricky. It just looked better when I got 100 ones. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's still a, a, a toilet tissue <laughs> bankroll, player. All right. So, so. He said, I got 100 ones. Yeah. That's hilarious. You know, because I grew up in the hood. In the hood, wow. people, people, if they wanted to fake you out, they put this rubber band, right? They get a rubber band and they pull out this big old knot, put a $100 bill on top. I'm like, you know, that's, that's 6,000 ones up under there. You know, <laughs> they're trying to act like they got some money, got 6,000 ones. I don't care how you try to manage. A hundred dollars is still a hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, and I've heard you say before, people think and like tithing, which is good. People shouldn't be. People should give money. People should not be stingy because that's a principle of God. You know, mm-hmm. that you should, you should not. But what people don't do is they don't they don't do right with the other ninety percent. That part. So if you do the right thing with ten percent of your money, the wrong thing with ninety percent, you will be a broke tither. Yeah, fooling his money gonna soon depart. That part. Now, if you want to have a, if you want to have a consistent divorce from your money. Mm-hmm. And just be foolish because the money will not hang around a foolish person. Well, they will soon depart. That's as guaranteed. They 
they gonna they they gonna it's be in rap. divorce court. Bro. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. So we have things uh, to help people with that. To help, we have uh, programs and, and uh, gotcha. to help them be able to manage their money. So we talked about it's it's interesting. Like when I think about managing money, and I think you you covered this, but when I think about managing money, I think about managing your money in such a way that the outgo does not exceed the income. So the upkeep does not become the downfall. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's only one reason why people are wealthy and some people are poor. Hmm. Because you got more money coming in than you got going out. Wow. You know, if you got more money coming in than you got going out, then you can never spend your money. Wow. You can never, you can never, you, you know, the way the Rockefellers work, the way the Kennedys work, the way the DuPonts work, everybody, that's why we have to go back to the formula. And the formula is that what? MS plus SS plus TS equals assets. Equals assets. And, and income follows assets. And income follows assets. So people, they don't understand that the proper way to manage money is to make sure that you got more money coming in than you, get, than you got going out. You got more coming in than going out and got it coming in faster than it's going faster out. Faster and perpetually. And perpetually. Perpetually. So, yeah. so when you go to bed, your money keeps working. Yes. Thank you. That part. Yeah, I don't know if he, uh, I think that uh, let the church say amen. I th that. Yeah, I, th I think one of us needs to create a video called Wake Up Richer Every Day. Uh, wake Up Richer, richer, richer every, every Day. Every day. Uh, i got one of my good friends here with me. Can you make a note of that, please, sir? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 for, real, for, real, brother. for real, for real. Because the reality is that's when, when you have assets out there in the marketplace mm -hmm. and you've got promotional mechanisms for those assets, mm -hmm. They actually, you do actually wake up richer every day. Like sometimes it's hundreds of dollars richer. Sometimes it's thousands of dollars richer. Sometimes it's tens of thousands of dollars richer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hundreds of thousands of dollars richer mm -hmm. that I wake up in the morning mm -hmm. than I was before I went to bed last night. Oh. In fact, I didn't even look at yet how much more richer I woke up this morning. I usually look at it every morning mm -hmm. to yeah. see how much money I made while I was sleeping. A little addictive. Uh, it is a little, it's a kind of a, it's kind of a thing. It's kind of a vibe. Yes, sir. It kind of gives you a good feeling for the rest of the day. It does. <laughs> it, and you know what? Hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. And, oh, every, and everything sir. right with it because the Bible says the wealth of the son is later for the just. Mm. A good man leaves a hair to his children's children. Yes, sir. Being rich is just normal. Having exactly. money is just normal. And right. not, not having money is abnormal. And the reason I say that is because if you got to leave some money to, this is managing money again, what you were saying. Mm -hmm. We're we still on the same subject. Mm -hmm. So if God told us in, in uh, Proverbs 13 and what is it, 42, 13 and 42, I believe, if he told us that the wealth of the son is later for the just and, and our obligation or our duty, or just what like our expectation is to be a good man or a yes, good sir. woman, mm -hmm. is to leave an inheritance to our kids' kids. Well, if that's the case, then that means that the money got to be coming in way faster than by um, by potentially in much more volumes than you know just only what you just doing right now this moment. Mm. All right? right. So people talk about man, just live in the moment. I'm like, not when it come down to money, brother. What? Just I know what you're saying that enjoy the moment that you're in. Right. But you should be purposely on purpose managing your money in the kind of way where. In this moment, I'm creating money for tomorrow. In yes, this sir. moment. Yes, sir. In this moment that I'm in right now, this yes, activity that I'm involved in right now is creating money for my kids' kids because I'm not here about me. Right. I'm here about them. Right. And if, if and when a person can get that gauge different, they can get that on, aim man. different. Come on, man. You know, and they can understand that this activity right now that I'm doing in this moment right now has to benefit them. <clears throat> mm, and then, so good. And then we end up like, living off the... Off the we all supposed to be living off of leftovers. Mm, so, bro, that's that's fire. Leftovers. That's for real, for real. Yeah, we shouldn't be living off of what what we cooked. Right. It would be off of today's well, meal. Th and, and and we think about it. You know, it's it's interesting. You said um, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible tells us what that inheritance is. It says house mm -hmm. and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Mm -hmm. So the thing that would be good for a good man to mm -hmm. leave to his children's children mm -hmm. is at least one house mm -hmm. and some wealth. Come on. And, 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 and a lot of people say, well, I want my kids to have it as hard as I did so that they can learn that, well, you're assuming that because you had it hard, that's why you've learned the lessons that you learned. But maybe you learned the lessons that you learned in spite of the fact that you had it hard. Right? And how much better off would all of us be mm -hmm. if our parents had started us off with a house mm -hmm. and a nest egg? Like, it doesn't matter. You're watching this video right now on YouTube would your life be better if your parents had given you a place to live mm -hmm. and then money to start a family business or money to perpetuate the family business? Would your life be better? 
I think not only would it be better, it would be like worlds better. Worlds better. So, so since we couldn't do that, since that didn't happen for us, let's make sure we happen, make it happen for the next generation. One of our good friends, Dr. Sonia, always says, I may not come from a wealthy family, mm-hmm. or you may not come from a wealthy family, mm-hmm. but a wealthy family should come from you. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So good. Absolutely. It's normal to be wealthy. It is. Okay, and, it's, and, it's, and, and according to the Bible, it's what God expects. 100%. <clears throat> See, God said, I know my thoughts towards you. I think what people need to start doing is I, I, if we just raise the rent, okay? Mm-hmm. And so you know what? The thoughts that's going to be in my head, they're going to be the thoughts that God put in my head. 100%. Not the thoughts that people put in my head who have no concept of God. Well, all right, because they don't have no concept of God, but they want to put their thoughts in my head. But he mm-hmm. said, I know my thoughts towards you. And I wonder why God said that. It must be because people be trying to tell you what God said. Mm, come so, on now. Sound like he must have. He just felt like, let me represent myself around here. Right, because okay? I'm being misrepresented already. So I'm going to make sure I'm <laughs> representing myself. Yeah. What did he say? What did he say, Mary? He said, I know my thoughts towards you. He said, to plans to, the thoughts of uh, prosper, you, pros- not to to prosper you, not to harm you, to, and to give you an expected hope. end. Yep. You know, a hope and expected end. So we should what? We should expect to be wealthy. We should expect to win. We should expect to be wealthy. We should expect to be healthy. We should expect to be wise, mm. healthy, wealthy, and wise. Those should be our expectations of ourselves. And mm. when our children's children are prospering, it's just normal. It's just mm. what was required of us, and it's no big deal. It's not like we did our kids no favor. It's like we did our kids what? Our obligation, our We what? met our moral obligation. Our privilege, too. Mm. You know, so that what? So it'd be a plum pleasing privilege as well as a, a pleasure, not, and not just, um, you know, something that, that we, you know, I believe all of us would make a whole lot more money and be way more successful if we stop saying things like, man, I got to leave these kids some money. I get the privilege of leaving these kids some money. Man, I got to train. The game. Come on. It'll change the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, let's talk about this um, multiplying money piece. So we talked about making money. We talked about managing money. Let's talk about multiplying money. What do we do to multiply that money? Now that we've made it, now that we're managing it, let's go multiply it. What do we do? Okay, well... <clears throat> It kind of goes to some of the things that, you've, uh, that we've discussed before. In fact, some of the things that you teach, too. And um, it comes down to this. In order to multiply some money, you've got to understand the era that you live in, mm. how money is really made 100%. in order to multiply some money. Because you cannot, be, you cannot multiply money in the Flintstone era. Mm. All right. So if your name is Fred and your wife's name is Wilma, Wilma! And your dog's name is Dino. All right, and, it, and the daughter's name is Tabitha, and your son's name is Bam Bam. Pebbles. Oh, Pebbles, yeah. Pebbles, Pebbles. right. Pebbles, right. You, 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 you down with your, with your cartoons? Oh, my Flintstones? Right. I remember Flintstones now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pebbles I got, and Bam, I got bewitching uh, yeah, and the Flintstones yeah, mixed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if your daughter's name is Pebbles, and, and you're talking to Wilma, then you're going to suffer the consequences of a person who doesn't understand how to multiply money. Mm. And so you're going to be living in an era that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. All right, so it's really in an era of make believe. Mm. All right, because so that, people are living in a financial fantasy, struggling with their current financial reality. Come on, they try to multiply and money that in an era that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. So, for example, we know that in the beginning, everybody came to America, everybody was farmers, right? So if you so if you own a land, then you own a wealth. Okay, landlords, right? Mm-hmm. And then after that, it was an industrial age, right? Mm-hmm. So, you if you own, machines. so if you own machines, you own a wealth, correct? Mm-hmm. Then it was the distribution age, right? So if you own, own the outlets. If you own outlets, you own a wealth. Then it was the information age, right? Well, it was the technical age, right? And then so if you got down, and see, the thing what people don't understand about multiplying money is that you got to be at the beginning of trends to multiply money. 100%. Okay. In fact, it says in Luke, it says, it says that the children of this world are wiser when in their own generation mm-hmm. than the children of light. Oh, very important point. In their own generation. In their own generation than the children of light, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're paying attention to what's going on now. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the fallacy of the way that, um, particularly religious people that, that go to church a lot and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the reasons, instead of just understanding that the whole point of the kingdom of heaven is for you to do what? Have an impact in this life. We have people who are not even looking to have an impact in this life. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I just willingly ignorant. I just let mm-hmm. stuff go by. And then, and then use the name of God to like justify the ignorance. Mm. I'm like, God, everything but ignorant, bro. Wow. 
anywhere. All right. He ain't even, he ain't, I ain't even close to slow. All right. Come so on, and he don't expect you to be running around here. Don't know what's going on. Are mm -hmm. you hearing me? Your, your favorite song is, uh, uh, I'm like, what's your favorite song, man? I don't know. I, I think it's Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Tell me what's going on. I'll tell you. Why are you singing that song? Man, you ought to know what's going on. All right. And you, and you can know. So. The, the way the money is multiplied is knowing what area you're in. Mm. So we moved from out of that technical area, and then we moved up into the information age. Then we moved from the information age to what to um, to where we are about right now, which is the partnership age. Mm. So you you broke that thing down for us months ago, and it stuck to me like, look mm. about uh, about what era we're actually in. Oh, you got to make money in the age in which you live, brother. And and your money will absolutely multiply. Okay, and multiplication is the key to monetary success. Mm. Multiplication, not addition. All right. Mm. So, and how do we know that? Because if we took everybody right now, if I asked everybody who's listening, if you was going to work with the great Myron Golden over the next, say, 35 days, and Myron just said, you know what, I'll pay you $1,000 a day, or I'll give you a penny the first day, and i just let it multiply. Uh, how many of you all would say, give me that $1,000 a day? Knowing you're going to get $35,000. Come on, y'all got to answer that question quick. Don't start getting no calculators out. Mm -hmm. All right, so, <laughs> so if they chose the $1,000 a day, they would have, what, $35,000, right? At the, end of the, at the end of 35 days. Mm -hmm. But if they chose the penny and decided and it to every let, day. let it double, yeah, they got about, what, $171 million. Mm -hmm. All right, because multiple, Power of multiplication. Yeah. So we help people to multiply money because we get them to focus on multiplication. Mm -hmm. Because people go to school all their life, and they don't learn God's math. Mm. And what's God's Tell math? me about God's math. Well, well God's math is um, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32 and 30. And he said, one will put 1,000 a flight, then two will put 10,000 a flight. Mm. So one plus one doesn't equal two to a God. One plus one equals 10 to a God. Mm. That's God's math. And, it, and I took pre-calculus. I took finite math. Mm -hmm. I took statistics. Then I took business statistics. And ain't nobody teach me. And uh, while, while I was getting a bachelor's degree in, in school and uh, business, Nobody ever taught me God's math. Mm. And I'm like, well, how are you going to teach me God's math and you're not God's man or God's woman? Mm. So you can't teach me God's math because that math don't even mean nothing to you. So I taught me a whole bunch of math that doesn't add up to millions because um, of the way that these school books and everything, they're written by the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve sends us to these schools, and they say, whatever you do, don't teach them God's math because they're messing around to get rich, mm. and we don't want no competition up in here. So they mm. teach us man's math instead of God's math. But God's math is that you multiply your money because you multiply your partnerships. Mm. And so we teach people the multiplication of partnerships. It's interesting. I was, I was speaking at a church in Orlando, probably, it was, it was, wow, 17 years ago maybe? It's crazy. Time flies. And I was teaching on that concept of one will chase a thousand, two will put 10,000 on flight. And it literally hit me while I was teaching it. Wait a minute. Those are war terms. But we have, all principles are microcosms of each other. So if we apply those war terms to wealth, if one will chase 1,000, two will put 10,000 to flight. If one person can make 1,000, two people can make 10,000. Well, 50% of 10,000 is five times more than 100% of 1,000. And see, people are afraid of establishing strategic partnerships because they have to split the money. But they don't realize that the amount of money they're splitting is so much more than the amount either one of them could have made by themselves. Come on. And they, and they violate the major principle. Because the Bible mm. says, look not only on your own things, but also on the things of others. others. Mm. Right? And the Bible says, the first should be last, and the last should be first. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press mm. down, shake it together, run it over in good measure, shall men give it to your bosom. Meaning that the first thing that you can do to create a whole bunch of money is give somebody your attention. Mm. And then people will pay you back with their attention. And they have to. Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. And when mm. the Bible says something shall have, God just telling you what he already did. He just waiting for you to catch up. Wow. Right. So good. So, t so tell me this. You're teaching these principles, how to make money, how to manage money, how to multiply money. You've written a book. Mm -hmm. What's the book? Where can people get it? Okay. So they can go to all of my sites. Uh, this is the book here. It's called Unmovable, Unstoppable, Unshakable. Bible principles that guarantee you financial success. Okay. Right, so they can, they can get Unmovable, this. Unmovable, uh, unstoppable, unshakable. Yes. Unmovable, unstoppable, unshakable. Bible principles that guarantee you financial success. Mm. And the reason I wrote it is because I'm seeing people and I'm like, all you need to do is hire principles. And mm. if you hire these principles, then the principles will make the money. 
So basically, you're taking us right back to where we started from. Where we started from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so one more thing about this multiplication. So we do a couple of things to help people multiply this money. Um, <clears throat> first of all, we employ, um, we employ AI. Okay, so we have an exclusive software that shows us how to trade Forex, for example, mm -hmm. and um, it's about 90% it's about 90 accurate. 90% mm. accurate means it's only 10% inac inaccurate. Mm. And we've got several stu uh, case studies to prove it too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you partner with, these machines are amazing, you know, and if you partner with these machines and you know what information to feed them, you can make millions of dollars. Mm. If, you understand, if you understand how to feed these, you're talking about one plus one equals a million, you partner with the amazing minds of these machines. Uh, if you know what to feed a machine and you understand the data to put into it, the machine, will kick, it'll, it'll give you returns back so large it'll, it'll make your head almost blow clear off your body mm. if you know how to feed a machine. You know, just like when people are, they're partnering with these robots today, but what they don't understand is that you need somebody to help you create a think tank so that you can even know what to ask the machine. Mm. You know, once you start partnering that way, you can make a lot of money. And so that's one thing that we do, all right, and uh, by getting people to do that. Another thing that we do is we do international um, trading, too. And uh, I'm talking about, you know, commodities and stuff like that. We do international trading. And one thing that when people come along with us, we expose them to the ideas and some people partner with us. For example, uh, one thing that we're doing now, one of our partnerships is with some people in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have some products in Thailand that are very exclusive and that they sell here in the United States. So we import things in from Thailand. You say, why Thailand? Well, we pay attention to the, to the global market. We pay attention to what's going on globally financially. And what's mm -hmm. going on globally is that a lot of companies have pulled out of China, mm -hmm. and they aren't they aren't they aren't importing things from China anymore. Nike, Amazon mm -hmm. pulled out of China. So in the Apple, you know, when these big companies when they pull out of China, the handwriting is on the wall. That right. means that that's an amazing what opportunity mm -hmm. for somebody. So if you can find a country that has what you want, and you can get it from that country, and you can have direct relationships with the people there. So we found people that's been living over there for the last 20 years that's from the United States. Mm -hmm. So we all speak the same language and everything, mm -hmm. and they do, they do business with us exclusively. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an opportunity for people to partner with things like that. And mm -hmm. we have things that we, that, that products here that nobody else has in the whole world that come in. So that's how you multiply your money. You multiply your money, <clears throat> excuse me, by partnering with people who have access to things that you wouldn't have had access to if you hadn't, if you hadn't partnered with the people. Mm. And then you speed up the, the processes from being able to earn money a lot faster because now you have these amazing um, partnerships. So two is better than one, and then the threefold coin is not easily Quick broken. Right. Wow. So good, so good, unshakable, unstoppable, unmovable biblical principles for guaranteed success. Rick, wow. Great interview, brother. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you. It's going to be, uh, uh, people are going to be blown away. All right, guys. Appreciate y'all watching. And um, wow, what a great interview. So looking forward to seeing you on the next video. You guys make sure y'all take advantage of Rick's book and um, whatever else he's offering. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.